The movie Inception is by far one of the most popular films about lucid dreaming. I'm going to take the biggest eight ideas from that movie. I'm going to walk you through one by one whether it is something real, something you could do in a lucid dream tonight, or if it is simply special effects do not try at home. And by the way, one of these is something most people have no idea is actually true. And another one is actually a dangerous myth that I am excited to bust. Number one, can you do impossible things in a lucid dream? You'll remember in Inception, there was a scene where the entire cityscape started to like fold in on itself. Complete distortions of time, space, reality. Is that possible or just special effects? Lucky for us, that is 100% true. In a lucid dream, you can do things that are not possible in this universe. Because of course, well, in a dream, you're not dealing with real physical matter. You're dealing with your own mental projection of matter. And this doesn't mean it's easy, but it means it's trainable. So yes, in a dream, you could fold an entire city together, but you'd have to do the mental training to learn how to do that. For instance, one of the trainings I did in my lucid dreams was to reverse gravity. So we're so used to gravity as a habit that you'll notice in your dreams, you're walking on the earth, right? There's no real gravity in your dream, but it's your perceptual habit that there is. So we have to train ourselves to start to think of impossible things. Learning how to fly, learning how to turn ourselves into other people or into animals or into fantastical creatures. There are no limitations except for what our minds perceive as possible. It's one of the best parts of lucid dreaming. But you may be asking, didn't they in the movie say that if you did those things, like if you tested the boundaries, you did crazy things, then the unconscious would rise up and take you down? Hmm, well, that brings us to number two. Does your unconscious want to kick you out slash kill you? Hmm. You might remember whenever they would like push the boundaries, do something kind of edgy or impossible, it would get all the attention of the kind of unconscious dream figures that were in that person's mind and they did too much of it, they would kind of like rise up and come and take that person because it didn't belong in the dream space. Now, this is kind of a scary thing if it's true, right? So super fortunately for us, that is complete Hollywood nonsense. Your unconscious mind is not pitted against you and it's certainly not gonna come against you for sort of trying out things in the dream. The best way to see those dream figures that are in your space is as aspects of yourself because that's what they are. Now, that doesn't mean they're always gonna be the most friendly, sometimes we'll meet kind of like challenging dream aspects, but they're never going to rise up against us. I think it's really important to know that your unconscious mind, more than anything else, is actually very collaborative. And as you're doing your lucid dream training, it will work very cooperatively with you. Okay, what about number three? Number three is, can you dream together? When you're getting lucid, can you be lucid as a team, like they were in Inception? You know, they were kind of going in as a team together into someone else's mind, into someone else's dream and doing their work there. Well, as far as the science and the training shows us so far, the answer to this is gonna be no. Now, when you're actually lucid dreaming, you know, the theory is that most of the time it's really you just in your own unconscious mind. Now, there are different theories about are our unconscious minds connected to a collective unconscious like Jung says. And there is some interesting anecdotal evidence from expert lucid dreamers who they kind of coordinate these, these sort of dream meetups. They would go to sleep, they'd say we'll meet here at this time, and they'd try to meet each other in the dream. And there's been some varying success, but again, just anecdotal. This is very much a new area of exploration, so who knows what's really possible, but insofar as what we know, know in this moment, it's a no-no. Number four, can you have a dream within a dream within a dream? In Inception, they have these kind of nested dream scenarios. They're going deeper, deeper, deeper into the person's mind. And so the question is, like, can you have this experience of a dream within a dream? And the answer, you know, the straight up answer on the surface is actually yes. This is actually called a false awakening. You may have had this where you're in a dream and it's excellent, maybe it's lucid, and then ah, you wake up. And maybe you even write your dream down or you're telling someone about the dream. And then, ah, wait, you actually wake up. So a false awakening happens and you can essentially dream that you've awoken up and you're now in another dream. It's not the nested idea that they had in Inception and it certainly doesn't take you deeper, deeper, deeper. It's more like a transition like in a movie. And often if you're getting lucid a lot, it's one of the ways that your mind can trick you. So a tip for that, make sure the first thing you do when you wake up every single day is a reality check. Don't know what those are, make sure you watch my video on them. As for number five, 
Is time distorted in a lucid dream? Inception, when those nested dreams were happening, every time they went down a layer, time changed, right? So by the time you went down a bunch of layers, one minute in the waking life ended up being like 10 years in the dream space. Now, is this true? Is time really skewing and distorted in a lucid dream? Mm, nope. And interestingly enough, they actually did a little bit of a test on this. One of the first experiments which proved that lucid dreaming was true uh, used the eye movements of sleepers. So normally when you're dreaming, it's just kind of random, but they learned when you're lucid, because your eyes aren't paralyzed, right? Rapid eye movement, you could send intentional signals like left, left, right, like a Morse code with your eyes. So one of the things they did, they said, well, listen, when you get lucid, send us the signal, count for 10 seconds, send us the signal again, count for 10 seconds, send it again. Because they also wanted to know, like, does time change in a lucid dream? And what they found is that the signals, the timing, it's about the same as waking reality. So no, time is not distorted in a lucid dream. And number six, can you induce lucid dreaming with a machine? One of the things I wish we did have in this life is the machines they had in, the, in Inception where everyone just kind of plugs in, they go to sleep, and then boom, they're in. Uh, for anyone who's trained in lucid dreaming, you know this isn't exactly how it works. It requires a lot more diligence and courage and practice. Uh, so the question is, can you induce it by a machine? Not the machines they have, but actually, yes, you can. So how does this work? They just released a study where they were experimenting, like if they stimulated people's brains with different kind of frequencies while they were asleep, would they be able to trigger lucidity? And so they tested with people who are not lucid dreamers, right? So they're not practiced, it's not likely they're gonna get lucid. They did a bunch of different frequencies and what they found is when they, using electrodes, stimulated their brain during REM with a 40 Hertz frequency range, which is a gamma range, people got lucid. And so that you know, gamma, that range, is, that's what happens in your brain naturally when you get lucid. So there's something about that frequency which is connected or correlated with lucidity. And interestingly enough, yeah, if you are externally stimulated and you kind of push the brain into that state, it does trigger lucidity in a dream. It's pretty wild. I hope one day we can kind of have little sleeping hats which would uh, track us, know that it's REM, and then like give us that stimulus. It would make us lucid every single night. Hmm. Number seven, do you need a totem to distinguish between reality and the dream realm? Now, you remember uh, Leonardo DiCaprio had a spinning top, and the idea was he carried it with him in waking life, and he'd spin it, and if it fell over at a certain point, he knows, okay, cool, I'm in the waking reality. In a dream, if he spun it, it would spin forever. And that's how he would know he was dreaming. So he had this dream totem kind of to help him keep that balance. Now, is this real or is this just a really great plot point? It's kind of in the middle, but I'm actually gonna go with it's real. And I'll tell you why. When you were training in lucid dreaming, we use something called reality checks. And they're super, super helpful, especially when you're kind of really beginning to learn what it feels like to become lucid. And a reality check is kind of like the spinning top, but actually effective. Spinning tops, that kind of thing, are not really that practical. The real reality checks you want to do are using like your hands and your breath. So for instance, in a dream, if you're looking at your hands and you're moving it quickly like this, it's very hard for your non-lucid brain to replicate that degree of detail quickly. So if you look at your hands, turn them over, look them back, you usually like lose a finger, you turn into a claw, crazy stuff can happen. Or for instance, if you try to push your finger through your hand, obviously in the waking realm, not so good. In the dream realm, if you expect it to go through your hand, often it will. So these are things that we do actually use to help us really check, are we in the dream realm? Are we in the waking realm? And this is just to get us lucid in a dream. You may have had that experience where you're like, ah, I think I'm dreaming. But then something goes, no, 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 you're fine. It's not, it gives you an excuse. And you're so close to getting lucid, but then didn't. That's when you'd use a reality check. Ah, I think I'm in a dream check. Whoa, I am in a dream. So in some ways we have not so much totems, but these kind of practices uh, using essentially what our brains can and can't do versus waking versus dream to help us capitalize on those moments of insight and make sure we get lucid. And lastly, number eight, which for me is really important to, to bust this myth because it's a little dangerous. And the myth, of course, is this idea that, like Leonardo DiCaprio's wife in the film, that doing lucid dreaming makes you lose your grip on reality. That if you practice lucid dreaming, you won't be able to distinguish between what's real anymore. And this is just simply 
not true. Now this doesn't mean that everyone is a candidate for lucid dreaming. You know, for anyone who may be struggling to distinguish between realities or having schizophrenic episodes or you know anything like that, I would you know probably not recommend doing a lucid dreaming practice. But for anybody else, you know, when you're learning how to get lucid, you're working with the part of your brain that's associated with metacognition, self-reflective awareness. So what actually happens is you become more mindful, more present, more aware of your life. So as you get lucid in the dream, you also get really lucid in your waking reality. Your capacity to see things for what they truly are is what increases. It's the opposite of becoming delusional. You actually start to see clearer. And most of the people who train lucid dreaming notice incredible impacts in their waking existence too. Like increased presence, energy, openness, perception, like there's something that shifts. From a neuroscience perspective, the part of the brain that is correlated with metacognition, they found in a study that it's actually physically bigger in lucid dreamers because of that kind of like the dual practice. And that this ability to like recognize the dream for what it is, like really come to one's senses, that capacity then brings that into the waking life. So instead of becoming delusional, it's quite the opposite. You become far more lucid, aware, and sane. So that's what Inception got right and wrong about lucid dreaming. If you want to begin or continue your lucid dreaming practice, jump to my channel and continue learning there.